Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How are you doing, ladies? Good Hi. morning. It's great to see you. Hi. It's almost Thanksgiving. Hey, it's almost Thanksgiving. And, One and, more uh, week. From, yes, yes. And it, I'll have to figure out what... Uh, I have to up my size in my uniform uh, after next week because uh, <laughs> that's only how it goes every year. But uh, man, we got a we got an awesome uh, guest today. He's a man of many talents, and so this should be a very very entertaining episode. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. America fell in love with our guest today on America's Got Talent back in 2007. Now he is wowing the crowds at New York, New York in Las Vegas with his show. And I just love this name. Who's the dummy now? So let's hear it for Terry Fader. Hello. Well, How's Terry, going? man, welcome to the show. And uh, I appreciate you for uh, for spending a little time with us today. Oh, man, it's such an honor. I mean, when, when I heard I, I got to do something like this, uh, I, it was like, of course, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm so thank you for asking me. Awesome. Awesome. So how's everything going in Vegas? Oh, man, things are amazingly well. I, I, you know, I, I, I did 11 years at the Mirage. And then uh, we were planning on doing a move in 2020 over to uh, New York, New York. And we had this whole ad campaign. And then, of course, COVID shut Vegas down for a year. And I got to start in March of this year at New York, New York. And, and then I was in a temporary theater until August. And now I'm in my permanent home, hopefully for the next decade or two, uh, okay. at New York, New York. And I am having the time of my life. I'm telling you, it's just incredible. Just incredible. So happy to hear that, Terry. And what does it mean to you to be back headlining in Vegas after the pandemic? Well, you know, it's funny because I, I didn't realize until... Um, uh, maybe the first month that since I was uh, probably 18 years old, I had never gone more than just a couple of days or a few days, maybe a week and at the very longest two weeks without performing. And so uh, it was, you know, I didn't realize how addicted I am to uh, performing. I mean, I was kind of born to do this. And so it was very odd. I mean, I just was like, wow, this is weird. And then as it went month and month, I just, I got very antsy. And so even though I couldn't perform on stage, I, I started putting out full length videos of songs. Uh, if you come to my show in Vegas, you'll notice I do mostly, I have uh, uh, clips of songs. So I'll do a verse and a chorus, that way I can get more impressions and songs in. Um, so during the pandemic, I started doing entire songs all the way through with different puppets every week. And I just really enjoyed doing that. So I'm still doing that. And uh, every single week on my YouTube, uh, and everything is Terry Fader except TikTok is official Terry Fader is TikTok because somebody stole my name on, on <laughs> TikTok. But the rest of them are all at Terry Fader or hashtag Terry Fader, whatever. <laughs> and uh, and you can you can see these full length videos and I'm having so much fun. And I've been doing them ever since uh, maybe May of last year. So there's a lot of 2020. So th there's a ton of them <laughs> to watch. Man, how, how can somebody steal Terry Fader on TikTok? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they, they get those they get those names and then they try to gouge you and i'm like now nah, just i'll just do official terry fader i'm not gonna pay you you know a hundred thousand dollars for the name i don't care you know that's that's what they do you know you can actually make complaints and stuff but I, we may or may not but i'm, I'm okay with official terry fader it's good <laughs> we're so wow, lucky well, Chief, nobody's tried to steal Oh, go ahead, Leah. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Julie. <laughs> I was going to say, nobody has tried to steal Chief Chat yet. We are. <laughs> Maybe one day. That's how we'll know we oh, made it. Somebody yeah. tries to steal <laughs> Chief Chat. Well, yeah, they, they, know, they know that our ransom can't go over like 15 bucks. If, our, if it's over $15, <laughs> then they, they can have it. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Harry's. So glad to hear that, you know, you were able to to keep performing, so to speak, uh, during the pandemic and, and, and you know, uh, continuing on. So now at your show, though, what can fans expect to see? And then what characters did you bring back? Or, do you have any new ones that you're debuting? 
You know, I, 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 at the Mirage, I debuted a new character every year. I kind of made a little commitment as long as I was the Mirage, I was going to debut a brand new character. And a, a, couple, two, a couple of the years, maybe more than a couple, I, I debuted more than one character. And one year, I think I debuted three. And so wow. I have so many characters. I've got like 25 characters now that I'm going to take a break on creating new characters and because I don't have time to implement all the characters that I do. Although I will say, and this is going to be uh, coming up on my TikTok, mostly on TikTok, and I'm going to be putting on all the others. But I had, um, uh, you know, how, when Baby Yoda has just become so popular um, mm -hmm. that I actually had a puppet maker. Um, his name is Landon Harvey. He lives in Dallas, Texas. And I had him create Baby Yoda's parents. And I'm going to be doing a series when the Mandalorian starts again for the third season. I'm going to be having regular TikToks of, of Baby Yoda's parents. Um, and it's very funny. And we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So so when you said that, you know, I didn't even think about it. I was thinking of my stage. But then I realized I, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at, at the Baby Yoda's parents. They're, they're in this room. This is my puppet room. And I'm going, oh, that's right. I do have a new character. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny you say that. Out. Well, that's funny you, you talk about Baby Yoda because uh, we we um, as you know we we just the Space Force is about to turn three years old here in December, uh, and we we got a chance to interview one of the kind of uh, generals that kind of started helped start the Space Force, and uh, oh. she was talking to us about what we should carry in our store as far as merchandise for the Space Force, and she mentioned get a Baby Yoda with a Space Force shirt, uh, and and that thing will sell like hotcakes, and I was like you know what that's a great idea for uh i don't know what type of <laughs> copyright or, or or whatever infringement we may have but that, that, that would be an awesome uh uh thing for merchandise for the space force yes it certainly would man that would sell like crazy because i'm a big fan I, i'm one of those guys that watched uh, the mandalorian literally the the second it debuted on disney plus i was in a limo on my way to do um an interview in hollywood and I had my phone and, and I had downloaded Disney Plus and, and it was funny because when Baby Yoda, when The Mandalorian debuted, it was, uh, that was when Disney Plus debuted. So, I mean, I'm not kidding the second. <laughs> I wow. turned it on and I watched it in the limo on my way. And when, when it showed Baby Yoda at the end, I'm like, oh, oh, you know, so I was, I was an early, I was, I knew early on about the big secret. And, um, and so it, I just, I'm a huge fan of the series, love Star Wars, love Disney. Oh, yeah. Well, team Baby Yoda over here too. So, <laughs> so, so we have something in common. Uh, you're originally from Dallas, and uh, that's exactly where our exchange headquarters is, is in Dallas, Texas. So, uh, oh, nice. and you were quite young. Was that? I said nice. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. Listen, I'm I'm stationed in Dallas, Texas. There's probably a, a two or three other Air Force members that are actually stationed here, uh, and so that's. I mean, it's. I can't complain about a thing. I love Dallas. And I'm a cowboy fan. So that that's man, that just oh. makes everything a whole lot better. You know, I'm in Vegas and now they we have the Raiders and I never liked the Raiders. I always loved John Madden though. I was a huge fan of John Madden, but I never liked the Raiders um as a cowboy fan because I grew up I literally was born in, in Dallas at St. Paul's Hospital. And uh and so I never lived anywhere until I moved to Vegas in uh, and when I was 42 years old. And uh, so I'm a huge Cowboy fan. And when they said the Raiders were coming into Vegas, I said, well, I guess I'm a Raider fan now. But I will tell you this. Uh, when the Raiders play the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, I'm going to be rooting for the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, can't, yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that is a killer stadium, though, they, they built in Vegas. I, 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 haven't been, I haven't been there, but, uh, but I've seen it. And I was like, man, that looks like the Death Star literally the death star right over there yeah, so it's 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 amazing and you know it was really bizarre being in vegas because um vegas was shut down during the, the during the uh, quarantine but they were still working on that stadium so we would drive by and we would see all the workers out there and we're like well wait a minute if they can go work why can't i go to work you know but uh, yeah. it's a beautiful stadium i just went and saw the <laughs> rolling stones there um a couple of weeks ago and uh what a phenomenal phenomenal stadium i cannot wait to go see a uh, a raiders game Awesome. Awesome. So let, let's kind of take it back to where it all started. So you were really young when you developed your comedic talents. So tell us when you realized you had the gift of impressionism. Well, I was always a, a, a comic. I, I was voted class clown every single year of my school. And I mean every year <laughs> uh, from from preschool on because I was always that funny kid. 
um, you know, I was never a mean comic. I was never, you know, I, I was always just looking for silly, goofy things to make people. So I, I never um, made fun of people or, or got laughs at the expense of somebody else. I, I have no problem getting laughs at the expense of myself. Um, and that's one of the great things about being a ventriloquist is I can have the puppets make fun of me and I don't have a problem. But I don't I don't like I don't want anybody to watch my show. And, you know, like I don't make fun of celebrities so that so that a celebrity might might see it online and go, oh, man, that hurt. You know, I, I would never do that. But when I was um, I, I didn't even realize that I could do impressions and I don't do impressions of speaking impressions. I can do some, but not, not very much. But I do singing. I could sing even as a little kid. I could hear voices and I could I could recreate them in songs so like uh, when before my voice changed of course I was doing impressions of Michael Jackson he was he was young too um Donnie Osmond Wayne Newton you know Dr. Shane darling Dr. Shane you know and so even as a little kid I could I could sing just like these guys and then when my voice changed, I was able the oddly, it changed just enough to where I could do the, the males, but I could still, I could also do the females. So at church, I would get up with a puppet. I started doing ventriloquism when I was 10. And at church, I would get up and I would do, uh, I have a puppet sing an Amy Grant song, <laughs> you know, as Amy Grant. And then the next week I would get up and sing like Michael W. Smith, uh, you know, and do a song. So it was very interesting. And the weird thing is I didn't even know I was an impressionist. I, it came so naturally for me. I honestly thought everyone could do this. And I, I was maybe 31 <laughs> years old before someone, you know, I made an offhand comment about, you know, um, a singer. And I said, I don't know why they just don't sing it like the original artist. And this person looked at me and said, you're the only person I've ever known in my life that could do that. And it was like, ding. Oh, OK. So I have a talent that nobody else has. <laughs> So, so you said you said you started ventriloquism. You know, I can't even say that word. I'm from Louisiana, so anything over two syllables is just it, it, it kills me. Right? But, but uh, so you started at ten. Like, what 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 made you want to start that, or did you see something or on, on TV or someone do it or? Well, like I said, I was always an, uh, a, I mean, I was always a comedian, and I loved entertaining. My very first memory uh, as a child, I remember I was three years old, and I was standing on a table in our church um, the cafeteria, and I was singing, and I remember the sea of adult faces, and they were all smiling and laughing, and then they clapped at the end. And man, the bug! I was like, "That's it. This is. This, I love this feeling. I'm going to do this." So I always wanted to entertain. So I would. Um, always entered the school talent show and every year i would do i was a magician i was a hypnotist i did i sang i i did poetry i did you know so i was always looking for things to do and when i was 10 years old i found a book in my school library about doing ventriloquism and i thought ooh, that'll be a good thing to do in the in the school talent show so uh i learned how to do it i it took me a couple of days of learning how to substitute the letters you know you have to substitute uh, b's and m's and p's and then I went to Sears and bought a $10 puppet and started, and that was what I used for my talent show that year. I won the talent show. And then uh, I, that was, that was, I never looked back. I never went back to any of the other things and I just fell in love with the art. Oh my goodness. That's a, that's a great rich history of, of how you kind of started. But when did you realize, hey, I can make a living at this. I can make money. Uh, I can have a career making other people happy through your gift. When did that moment come See, for you? That's an interesting question because um, my parents had a janitorial business. And um, so we had no employees but me, my brother, and my sister. And so um, we had several buildings that we would have to clean. And we moved when I was 14, we moved to Corsicana, Texas. And uh, I'm sure you know where that is because it's just 50 miles south yeah. of Dallas. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And so I moved to Corsicana and um, my parents would drop us off at the uh, First National Bank building, which was seven floors, a seven story bank building. Me, my brother and my sister would have to clean that from top to bottom every single day, five days a week uh, after school. So we would finish school. We would go straight to the bank building. We would clean until about um, 10 o'clock at night, go home, get up early, go to school. Do the, that was our that was our life. And I got to tell you, I hated it, of course. What, you know, what 14, 15 year old would not hate that? We were doing other things even before that, but that was the, that was the most intense work we were having to do. So I made the decision, I was already ventriloquist. So I said, you know what, this is not what I want to do for a living. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, um, listen, I'm, I'm naturally hardwired to hate manual labor. <laughs> I hate manual. I don't like doing things that are hard <laughs> physically. I don't mind mental. I don't mind mentally. I love mental labor. Um, I hate, uh, uh, you know, manual physical labor. So what I did was, 
I pass the time by listening to the radio and singing along to the radio without moving my lips. So I'm cleaning toilets and I'm going, don't stop believing, hold on to the feeling. <laughs> and learning how to sing without moving my lips. And, um, and that's really how I did it. And I, because I said, oh, and then I found a book when I was, you know, cause I was, I was a voracious reader of anything ventriloquism. And I found this book and, and to, to, for the life of me, I cannot remember what book it was and I've lost it. But this guy had a picture of a contract and, he, and it, it showed that he made $500 for a performance at a nightclub. And he was, you know, the book was talking about how to do it and how to make a business out of it. And I'm sitting there reading this book and I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, 15 years old, I'm thinking, Five hundred dollars. I could. I can make five hundred dollars to do a show, you know. And uh, and so that's when it really. I was like, okay, this is all I want to do. And and honestly, I've never not done ventriloquism since I was ten. I've been doing it regularly since I was ten. I'm forty. I'm fifty six. So forty six years I've been doing this and making money at it. Wow. Wow. And then, um, so you've been doing this for 46 years, but America really got to know you back in 2007 through America's Got Talent. So what led you to try out for that show? Well, that was kind of a kind of an accident. I, I had, had considered it. I, I watched the first season. I wasn't sure about it because I heard about this show where the judges had a buzzer and it sounded like a glorified gong show. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that because, you know, I, I was already developing um, a fairly decent crowd because in 2005 is when I really focused on. I went and saw Danny Gans, who was an impressionist. He did singing impressions in Vegas. And I went and saw his show and, I'm, and I realized how much people love singing impressionists. And so I, I, as I'm watching the show, I'm thinking, I do every single voice he does. And then as I'm, as I'm driving to my gig, because I was performing at the uh, fair as a ventriloquist, and, and I thought, well, you know, I could do what Danny does, but I don't want to be known as Danny Gans Light. So why don't I just have my puppets do the impressions? So the next day I had a show, I had my shows in, in uh, uh, Logan, at the Logandale Fair, uh, the Clark County Fair in Logandale, Nevada. And, and I just, for the, just on a whim, I downloaded uh, the, the track to uh, Friends in Low Places. And it's something I had done. I had a, a band for 15 years, so I had a huge amount of songs that I knew. And, and I had it hooked up to the sound system. And one of my puppets said, I can do an impression of Garth Brooks. And I said, really, let me see you do it. So I hit the button and I sang Friends in Low Places and I had the puppet and I didn't move my lips. And I got to tell you, I watched the audience and they just, uh, their jaws dropped. So I said, okay, I'm onto something here. This is going to be fun. So I rewrote my show and for and and from the uh, middle of of 2005 up until America's Got Talent called me I that my entire show was in, my puppets doing impressions. Well what happened was in 2006 when the first season was on people kept coming up to me and my crowds were getting bigger and bigger because they were fascinated by the fact that the puppets did these impressions and they were saying you need to go on America's Got Talent and I said I'm considering it. Well unbeknownst to me hundreds or possibly thousands of people all over the country because i was traveling coast to coast doing fairs were emailing and writing and calling nbc and saying you have got to get this guy on america's got talent they actually called me and said we have had such a huge response would you like to come on the show and i said yeah where do i audition and i happened to be in performing in la at schools when they were doing the auditions and so uh, so i went over there and did the audition and I didn't think I was going to win it. I mean, come on, what are the odds? There are millions of people that try out for this. So I, I didn't really go on to win, though. I went on mostly just to to get the exposure. I thought, man, I could put together a killer DVD, uh, you know, to sell myself and maybe double my prices at, uh, at elementary schools. <laughs> you know, who would have thought I would sign a multi-million dollar uh, you know, contract the next year? Man, that's crazy. That is a awesome story, actually. And, uh, you know. <laughs> It, that's a great segue because you know we got we got to meet one of these characters now. If they if they're singing "Friends in Low Places," man, they they got to be on Chief Chat. So that can, can you introduce us to one today? Absolutely. Now let me tell you how this guy got started. I was actually a lot of people think he was my first character, but he was not. My first character was Walter T. Airedale, my cowboy puppet. But um, but Winston, uh, I was doing a Kermit the Frog impression, and I had this little Kermit the Frog puppet. And I was doing What a Wonderful World, where Kermit would sing as Kermit, and I would sing as Louis Armstrong, and we would go back and forth. And um, I, we, in order to do that on America's Got Talent, I had to get permission from the Muppets, and they said, no, we don't allow anyone to be, to be Kermit except the real Kermit on television. So uh, unless it's like a parody, Saturday Night Live could do it, but I couldn't do it as, a, as an act. So I went online and I started 
uh, scouring the internet to find something that would be like a, a, a you know, a, a frog. So I found lizards and turtles and any kind of reptiles. And, and I found this cute little turtle. Um, and then after I won and got my gig in Vegas, I realized I, I have to have a proprietary puppet. So I contacted Puppet Heap out of Hoboken, New Jersey, who, and they're the same people that work on the Muppets. So, um, they, you know, they, they're, when I went in there to their, to their studio, they've got, you know, you can see like Kermit, uh, part, partly built Kermits and partly built Fozzies and Miss Piggies. It's quite surreal and amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. to be, and they, they made this guy and I created Winston, the impersonating turtle. And that's why I called him the impersonating turtle because he was going to do him. Are you ready, Winston? I am. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's get you up here. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hey, so, Winston, so, uh, what's you, going on? Oh, I'm having a good time. I'm just listening to Terry do his, uh, his interview. <laughs> it would be better with me though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Winston. You're so cute. Oh, no. Oh, you Hello. are too. <laughs> oh, thank <Hello>. you. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to sing something? Well, you just uh, said learns in both places. And that's the good thing about Winston is uh, I'm an impersonating turtle. So of course I can do, hi, ho, come at Keith Brock here. Right. And yeah, but you, your friends are okay. <laughs> Line it all on my roots. I showed up in boots and ruined your life. Hi, fire. Man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So Winston, we had Garth Brooks on our show about a year ago, but he did not sing for us. He was not able to sing. So no. you actually are the first, well, the first singing turtle and the first person to sing a Garth Brooks song on our show. Not even Garth Brooks did it. So good job, oh, Winston. Wow. Yeah, I, I probably <laughs> sang it better than Garth anyway. No, don't say that. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> you did good, Winston. <laughs> I'm definitely cuter than Garth Brooks, though. Well, I, we're not going to argue with that. <laughs> That's the fact. I, I'll co-sign you on that one, Winston. <laughs> Nothing against Garth, because Garth is a good. He's a good guy, and he he shows no, us a lot of love a on chat. chat. I've met him a couple of times. You know, he's come to Vegas, and and uh, he he knows that we that I do an impression of Garth Brooks without moving my lips. Uh, no, you don't. I do it. Uh, yeah, well, he does whatever. You know, so, but uh, but so so as far as the you know, so Winston helped me get through, and then the final episode of America's Got Talent. You know, we had gone, and and it was weird because uh, when you're on a show like that, you can't save the best for last because you may not make it through. So you really have to, to pull out all the stops and do the best you have. So that's what I would do. I would do the best I had. And then I would think, okay, now what am I gonna do? If I, and when I made it through, I'm thinking, how am I gonna top that? So in the very last episode, uh, it's my last shot to get America to vote for me. And I had been doing this uh, impression of Roy Orbison in my show as a, as a singer. And I had a band called Texas The Band. We were based there in Corsicana. And I would do, you know, crying. And, uh, and so I had all my friends and family were saying, Terry, you got to do your, your Roy Orbison. And I said, well, I've never done it without moving my lips. And so I came up with this idea and I put a little wig on Winston and I put some glasses. I look so cute. You did. Um, and, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he went on and he said, I was all right for a while. I could smile for a while. And that just captured the hearts of america it was crazy man well listen anybody <laughs> that wears a bow tie anybody wears a bow tie because i'm a bow tie guy i love bow ties but anybody anybody even a turtle uh reptile that wears a bow tie man is is all right in my book winston so oh you should see Me my too. camo bow tie yeah he has a camo bow tie he <gasps> oh, actually he has a he actually has a yes he has a military outfit and uh, so, yeah, it's it's really, really cute. And we made a little bow tie out of uh, camo material. So, yeah, because I'm a big supporter of the military. Yes, he is. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. We all are. Well, we, next time we, next time we meet you, Winston, you got to be suited and booted next time. Of course. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do I'm sure I'll do some kind of military event there and y'all can come and see me. Oh, absolutely. We're there. Vegas. Hey, we've been trying to we've been trying to get to Vegas since I got here last year. So. So Vegas is definitely on the on the uh, on the docket soon. Oh, make sure Chief Chat goes on the road. Love, oh, I would love to have you guys into my dressing room. Maybe we can do like a remote from there. That would be a lot of fun. You could be in the dressing room and we could all just ch uh, chat right there at the show, and you could show clips of the show and stuff. That'd be fun. Yeah, and I, yes, and I'll bring, we would love to do that. <laughs> and I'll bring I'll bring my friend. I do a little I do a little personating myself. 
Not not well though. Not good. And I and I move my lips too, so <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't work out that well. Learning this. <laughs> Jeez, why? Wait, hold on. Time out. We've known you for over a year, Chief, and we we've never heard this before. Every every episode of Chief Chat, we learned something new about Chief. Listen, Chief Rails even... was the freaking magician, so I, I got to come with something. I can't just not. Show up. Reyes was a magician. He was. So who do you impersonate, Chief? Uh, listen, let's go to the next question. We, we, this ain't about me. This is about <laughs> Terry Taylor and Winston well, impersonating Winston Turtle. I'm fascinated. I want to hear it. <laughs> See, the, turtle, the turtle gets Winston what he wants. You yes, I, tell him now. listen. When, Chief, when we get to Vegas, we'll put it on like the show. Yeah, I'm. I'm not ready yet. I got to tune up a little bit. <laughs> me, 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 me. Okay. Do some rehearsal then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chief sings a mean army fight song too. He does. Oh, oh my don't, gosh! Don't, don't yeah. Even though he's in the Air Force, he sings a really good and army purple rain. army song. It's, yeah, it's and too soon. Too soon. So Terry, so Terry, I we. We Army played Air Force. Uh, what was that? Last week, a week, a week and a half ago, and uh, I had a bet with a sergeant major that if the Army won, then I would have to sing the Army song, and if the Air Force won, he would have to sing the Air Force song. And unfortunately, oh, my uh, Air Force Falcons they lost, and so I had to go on my social media and sing the Army song, and, and it looked <laughs> like I was reading, but I don't know all the words, so I kept looking down at the words, and so it looked like I was reading a, a ransom note. So, <laughs> <while I> was, <laughs> it just looked awkward and it just weird and uh but I'm, I'm a man of my word if i lose a bet then uh i pay up i just had to put winston it did up seem because, like uh, i was hold i was holding him at an odd angle and it was hurting my wrist so so oh. so he he's he normally oh. doesn't hurt my wrist when we're performing so so i just <laughs> he said got lose some weight <laughs> <laughs> Chief. I'm sorry. I love Winston. So Terry, how do you decide who to impersonate or who do you have Winston impersonate? How do you how do you pick? You know, I, I will I will occasionally do something that's that's on the charts now, but not as much. What I like to do is iconic stuff that I know every generation will hear. For example, um songs that I grew up with or that, you know, we all grew up with or that that was popular um, and, and that have been in commercials or maybe uh, Disney movies and and things like that. So um, and that way, I, I, I like to pick classics and standards that I know uh, are going to be still popular in, a, in 50 years because they're 50 years old or older and people still love them and sing them, you know. And so but I will do modern stuff if it's a really fun, popular song that everybody is, is talking about or singing. And so I have no problem with that, but I really try to stick with those or if, or if something really just touches me and, and, um, and I, I decide that, uh, that I want to do it. It's kind of, kind of my own taste. It's whatever I feel like I want to do. <laughs> do you have a favorite? Like, can we ask that? Is that okay? Is that like asking yeah, it's if you okay. have a favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's it's hilarious how people feel about it. They're like, what do we call them? And I, you can call them whatever they want. They don't have feelings. They are puppets and dummies. and what, You can call them anything. And and I can tell you because they don't get offended. You know, it, it, the only thing that we get offended is my psyche, which uh, doesn't get offended by it. So um, Winston is my overall favorite. And the reason is that there is 100% no doubt in my mind that he won America's Got Talent. So, you know, this little turtle with a, a mop top glasses and, you know, and, and pre impersonating Roy Orbison just captured the hearts of America. My sentimental favorite is my cowboy, Walter T. Airedale. He wears a cowboy hat. He yodels and he sings country music. He's very arrogant. He feels like he's one of the one of the top greatest uh, legendary country singers in the world. And uh, he claims to have dated every single country female artist ever since the beginning of country music. So that's his point. <laughs> And then, but I got to tell you, my, my favorite, favorite to perform is my Elvis impersonator, Maynard Tompkins, because I have to tell you, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, you know, I'm not one of these people that's like, you know, want to toot my own horn, but I got to tell you, one of my more brilliant ideas for him, uh, I had this character for about 10 years before I came up with this idea because I couldn't figure out how to make an Elvis impersonator funny. And then one day I was driving, I used to drive our tour bus uh, with Texas, the band, and I was driving the tour bus. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there and I went, 
oh my gosh, what if he doesn't know any Elvis songs? So I've got the only Elvis impersonator in the world that doesn't, that never actually learned any Elvis songs. He just wears an Elvis suit and he says, thank you, thank you very much. You know? <laughs> and it's funny and it is really, really funny. The, uh, you know that I have this Elvis impersonator that never took the time to learn any Elvis songs. I just this is oh, a man, funny idea. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my it's gosh. hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's funny because he's like, uh, and he's the one I do more riffing. You know, the rest of them I, I usually stay on script. But with Maynard, it's it's so funny. I just kind of let my let my creativity go. The other night I was performing in Vegas and I'd never done this before. Or he had never done this before. And he says, I'm rehearsing for my new one man show on Broadway. And I'm like, where is this going to go? You know, because literally it's coming through my brain so fast that I just I just really uh, let my creativity free. And it flows through me so fast into him that it's almost like he is separate from me and saying it's not that I'm crazy or anything. It's just that. When you're, it's kind of like Robin Williams, you know, he, he thought in, not that I'm, believe me, I'm not comparing myself to Robin Williams, but it, it's the same similar thing where his brain works so fast that he's actually saying things and not, they're coming so fast that it's almost like a, a separate person than him saying it. And that's what happens when I have this character. I just, I let him go sometimes and it's, it's hilarious. It's just so much, I, I even laugh. Sometimes he gets me laughing. Um, uh, it's just fun. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, Terry, um, we have the military community watching live with us right now. So the floor is yours. What would you like to say to our nation's heroes? You know, um, a lot of people ask me why I'm very involved in, in the military. I won the Bob Hope Award uh, a few years ago. Um, I've got, um, you know, I've, I've gotten an amazing collection of, uh, of challenge coins. In fact, I've got, if, from, from what I understand, I've got the highest one. I've got the, a coin from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And uh, I think, I don't think anything beats that. And, uh, and so I've got this in, incredible collection. And, and they asked me why I do this. And there's a couple of reasons. When I was eight, um, I had a friend whose father was a POW in Vietnam uh, for seven years. And he was tortured and 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 I was too young for me and me and my friend, his son, um, we we weren't allowed to to listen to him tell the stories because they were too graphic. But I remember at times we would sneak, you know, and we were, when I was at his house, we would kind of sneak in and they didn't know we were there. And I would hear him saying, t telling these stories of horrific, horrific torture and the fact. And I, I actually watched this man cry as he talked about how he was treated when he came home and people spat on him and called him names. And I. I and as an eight year old, I thought, my, my God, how, how, how could this be? How could this be? And, and at that, even at that age, I said to myself, you know, if I ever have any say in this, I'm going to make sure that I let people know how proud I am and how proud they should be of people who serve. You know, you don't have to agree with the mission, but you must support the ones who are, who have no choice but to go on the mission. And so even if you're against it, you have to realize these people are, you know, they put themselves in, in a position that most of us, you know, I'm, I'm a civilian. I can't even imagine what these, these folks go through in every war and in every conflict and everything. So we have to respect and make sure they feel proud. And, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I've done that. Um, I, I honor the military in every show. And, and, and I also have added first responders to that because, you know, they're, they're a lot of times they don't, they don't get treated the way they should as well. And, um, but I, I've had grown men come up and start crying, I, tears rolling down their, their face after my show telling me, you know, I was in the Vietnam War and it was the first time I felt proud to be a soldier uh, since the Vietnam War. And that's really saying something. And we, we can never let that happen again. That's incredibly, incredibly important to me. Um, and then the second reason is I feel like anyone who gives themselves to a life of service. Um, ooh, did I lose them? Did I lose you guys? No, oh, no. you're here. No, no, we're here. here. Okay. I lost. I, okay. Yeah. I lost. I'm sorry. I lost the, I'm, I'm only seeing myself. I'm not seeing you guys anymore. Good, good. So I feel like gotcha. anyone who, do, who dedicates themselves, I'm, I'm a very strong Christian and believer in Christ. And, and I, I feel like that, you know, greater love has no man than to lay his life down for his friends. And I feel like that's what the military does. The military actually, um, you know, puts themselves in harm's way so that we don't have to same thing with first responders, you know? And, and so I, I just feel like that that is, that is the most Christ-like thing you can possibly do. And so as a Christian, um, I, I have such deep and profound respect for anyone who chooses to go into that, into that field. Well, man, thank you so much for your support and your, your kind words. And, um, you know, I know the exchange, we, 
we're, we're trying to do our best to uh, give back to the folks that were in the Vietnam War. Uh, we actually did a presentation at the Army and Air Force game uh, on the field with, uh, you know, giving a pin to uh, four uh, from all, from uh, the Marines, Navy. Uh, we had a Marines, Navy, Air Force, and we had an Army uh, veteran from Vietnam. And we actually did a pin and ceremony to kind of, you know, like you said, make welcome them home the right way. They weren't welcome home the right way. So uh, you, you made a, a lot of great points and we appreciate what you do to uh, take our mind off of, uh, you know, all the craziness that we deal with on a regular basis. So you are you are a part of our mission as well uh, for, for the morale and welfare of, of, of what we do. And and also you mentioned that you got a, a slew of of challenge coins and you probably got the top one, but you don't have the top top one, which which you will be getting after this show. So uh, I have my own personal challenge coin that I, I would love to <laughs> send your way. So so we can we can slightly trump, you know, the Joint Chief of Staff can be one one A or one <laughs> one B and I can be one A. How about that? OK, I'll take it. I'll take it. I love it. <laughs> Terry, we have the military community watching live with us right now, and I want to scroll over to our Facebook feed and read some of the comments that you're getting. You're getting a lot of loves and likes on Facebook. Um, Michelle is watching and she says, hello. Patricia Benson says, I remember watching you win AGT, my favorite. What a wonderful world. Thank you for coming today. Hi from Maine. So she's, Patricia is watching from Maine. Um, Arben says, hello. And Emily says, hi. Kiana is talking about Winston. She says, LOL, literally obsessed. It's the pink bow tie for me. So she's digging his <laughs> pink bow tie. Chris says, I have to see this show so good. So he wants to come see you in Vegas. Mark Beck is watching and he says, I don't think I've ever seen the cowboy. So he hasn't seen your cowboy puppet and he wants to. And Sergeant uh, Junta Hotegbe is watching from overseas and he left a eye rolling emoji. So lots of great people watching with us today. You're making a lot of people smile. Oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, um, on July 4th this year, my cowboy puppet, Walter, sang God Bless the USA by Lee, Lee Greenwood. Just um, just go to YouTube and type in God Bless the USA, uh, Terry Fader. And I sang it by myself in my show. In fact, I end every show with it now uh, because the response was so overwhelming and I could just feel the audience. Uh, I, it felt like they needed it. And I was only going to do it for the week of July 4th, but I, I just felt like it was kind of one of those, you know, it was a nice... Um, balm for the uh, craziness of the world and so uh so it's now the ending and that's when i honor the military and first responders is is uh, right before that song at the end of my show so uh but if you want to see the cowboy puppet sing it just type in terry fader uh, go to youtube and type in terry fader and god bless the usa and, and the, his name is walter t airedale and i want to say jeff dunham has a character named walter but my walter was first and I know my Walter was first because uh, he actually didn't used to be a cowboy. He was, I named him Walter Airedale because he was a political puppet and he was uh, from Minnesota and he was uh, a parody of Walter Mondale. That's how old I am when he was running against President Reagan. And uh, so I had, I had this little puppet that would be like, oh, geez, yeah, I'm, I'm running for president, you know. And so the, he was actually Walter Airedale. And then when I started my country band, I put a T in the middle. So I don't want people to think I stole the name Walter from Jeff Dunham because, you know, his, his Walter is amazing and, and funny. But I've had Walter T. Airedale since 1980. Well, actually, I got him in, in 1983 um, or, or 1980, yeah, 83 uh, for my 18th birthday. And uh, so I've had him for a very, very long time. And I created him in 1987, the, the character Walter T. Airedale. <laughs> nice. And I like the middle initial. I like that you gave him a middle initial. I don't know. I think that's yes, cool. and that, like the, that. T stands for, the T stands for Theophilus. I just thought it sounded really uh, uh, country, <laughs> Walter T. Airedale. You know, hey, I'm Walter T. Airedale. You know, that's <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> So I know I know who's the dummy now. I was really keeping busy, but uh, is there anything new that's on the horizon that you can share with us? Exclusive? You know, just um, continuing. I'm, I, I'm, I've got a TikTok again, official Terry Fader. I haven't really uh, chugged that along because I'm writing my Christmas show. I always do a um, a holiday show. It's called a Very Terry Christmas, 
And I actually kind of started that in Las Vegas. Nobody else that, that I know of had done that. But I started at the first year I started at the Mirage back in, uh, in 2009. And I changed my show. And it always starts the day after Thanksgiving. And, uh, and it goes until New Year's. And, and it's just a holiday-themed show. And it's so much fun. We even have a Jewish puppet you know, that comes out and does, uh, you know, uh, Hava Nagila and, and Dreidel song. And, uh, and it's, it's very, very fun, funny. And, uh, and it also is sentimental and has some really uh, touching, wonderful moments. So if you want to celebrate the holidays, come out and see me at um, New York, New York. Uh, I'm telling you, you will leave that show. If you, even if you don't like the holidays, you're going to leave the show in the holiday spirit. It's so much fun. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh I, I have go. got to I get go here. So I have to get to that. Up. Let's do it. Okay, let's plan. Well, you guys come, I'm co sure contact that... me and let's, yeah, let's hang in the dressing room. Even if we don't do a remote, let's say, let's just uh, chat in the dressing room, even if you, um, and we'll get pictures oh gosh, of stuff. Oh my gosh, I want to see the Christmas show. I want to go oh. so bad. Oh. <laughs> okay, I let's just finished, time off. I just yeah. finished, I just finished the script and I just got all of the, uh, all of the stuff together and we're going to start rehearsals Friday. And we're going to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to rehearse. And I'm taking Monday through Thursday off because I'm meeting my family at Disneyland. And we're going to spend, uh, and we're going to spend uh, the Thanksgiving holidays. And we're going to come back for actual Thanksgiving and, and cook a big meal here and everything. And then Friday, I'm going to rehearse again. And then uh, we do the show for the first time next Friday. Uh, so I'm just, I'm getting so excited. And oh my, my house, gosh. we're decorating my house uh, this week. So uh, we've already got a, a couple of our Christmas trees. We have a huge house, an 8,500 square foot house. And I, I think the last time we decorated, we had something like uh, 18 Christmas trees. Um, we had them all over in the courtyard oh. and everything. And so this year we're not going to go quite that much, but we're probably going to have maybe 10 Christmas trees. I, I, I'm just like the, I'm the, the craziest Christmas person you'll ever know. I love Christmas. <laughs> oh my god. Me too. <laughs> but I don't have 18 trees. Just just four. We try to, try to hey, four is, four is more than most. <laughs> well, four is obsessive uh obsessive <laughs> excessive uh Julie. But no, no, I love Christmas too. But but listen, these two right here are the Hallmark twins, right? So it it is anytime uh we talk about Christmas. Hallmark movies and all kind of stuff comes up, and they just go into a complete. The interview just goes off the rail when we talk about. Oh, Christmas. we are we're going to get along great because I love Hallmark movies, and and I have I don't miss any Hallmark movies. My wife and I watch every single one of them. We tape them, and I have not missed a Hallmark. And I mean, we're talking Christmas and Valentine's Day and uh, spring and summer and fall. I we watch every single Hallmark movie, and I love them. And I have my favorite. Favorite Hallmark actresses. I love Danica McKellar, and I love um, uh, Lacey Lacey um, uh, Chabert. And and I just found out my manager manages Lacey Chabert, and I'm like, dude, when am I going to meet Lacey? She's <laughs> one of my favorite Whoa. Hallmark um, actresses. But oh, listen, I'm not kidding you. I I am a, I am obs as obsessed with Hallmark as you guys are. I love the Hallmark movies. Love them. So my girl, my girlfriends and I are having a girls' night in tomorrow night, and we are watching Christmas movies for all night. I don't know what it says, but I, I would I would fit right into girls' night out. <laughs> I'm, I'm the gayest heterosexual in on the planet. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So Terry, <laughs> before we say goodbye, can you remind us where can we go to follow you on social media and learn more about Who's the Dummy Now? Yeah, um, all of my social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm on, uh, I, and now I'm on TikTok. Everything is Terry Fader, at Terry Fader, except TikTok is of, at official Terry Fader. So uh, so as long as you and 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 if you if you follow me on TikTok, I'm I'm doing random videos now, but I'm going to eventually get to where I'll be doing two and three a day. But I just got to get this, you know, this Christmas show down. And and then, of course, I have got to write a new show next year. So I'll try to just I'll try to get into the habit of doing little things. But right now I'm so crushed under the weight of making sure that I get the, the shows done, that it's really hard for me to to um, <laughs> to keep posting little things. But eventually I'll, I'll be doing it. So just follow me and you're going to and you're going to absolutely love Yoda's mom and dad. They're, they're hilarious. So <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely, and it, and and Terry, if you ever come home to Dallas and you want to check out uh, the exchange, we'll, we'll we'll definitely host you. So let, let us know. Oh, that would be so great! I would love that. I would absolutely love that. So, uh, 
kind of like Terry, uh, Terry's pl plugging his sites, we want to let you guys know that these episodes can be found on uh, YouTube and Spotify. So just uh, search Chief Chat on YouTube and Spotify and check it out. Uh, Terry, man, it's been so much fun having you with us today. You are an excellent interview. Uh, and I, I like how you're funny, very personable, but also you you figure out how to bring everybody together. And that's with through your 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 art, your gift, and also kind of, you know, America was in a in a is been in a weird place for a couple of years now. And you trying to uh, got you singing that God bless America before the end of every show, trying to bring everybody together. Like I, I love the way you're finding ways to try to bring people together. And uh that does so much for the military community because like I said, uh it's it gets crazy, you know, in in our world. And we need some something to kind of get our mind uh, off of what we got going on. So we appreciate you for what you do. Well, you got a big fan here at the exchange. We, we love you. And next time we come to Vegas, we are going to definitely look you up. Uh, I tell you, we got to go to Nell's that. Air Force Base, uh, ladies. Nell's Air Force Base, and we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a, a chief chat out there, and we're gonna go to uh, see Terry and, and 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 mix it up with him, and maybe have an interview uh, on location. So that'd be awesome. That would be wonderful. And I got to ride in the Thunderbirds. Oh, did you? I actually got to ride it. Oh, yes, wow. and, and I, I got to pull nine and a half G's. Uh, not many people have done that, but I actually got to pull nine. And I did not pass out. I threw up the whole time, but I did not pass <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what, where was your barf bag? Did your barf bag, was it full when you oh, left or what? It was full. I, I'm telling you, I've never, I've never <laughs> been so sick in my life. I actually kissed the ground. I literally kissed the ground when we got off. Like, and, and it's so funny because we, we had done the, we had done like the, you know, the eight G's and, and he goes, all right, Terry, we're about to do nine and a half. And I said, I don't think I can. And he goes, Terry, I'm not letting you get up here and do it. You're going to have to suck it up buttercup and we're doing it. And I said, okay, fine. And we did it. And then he goes, you want to do anything else? I said, please get me home. And I'm blood throwing up. But it was, uh, it was, I, so I don't regret doing it, but, um, but you know, it was something else. It was really something else. So I just imagine like, all, you know, the photos that you take when you're going on these these rides and they show you like capture the moment when you're going down a roller coaster. Like they didn't yes. capture somebody going 9G and the faces oh. they make. <laughs> oh, they they videoed me. They videoed me. And I did a uh, I did a benefit show for the uh, for Nellis Air Force Base. And during the video, they, I mean, during the thing, they played the video of me throwing up. It was so funny. <laughs> And, but then I had some other people tell me, they go, look, you, almost all of us do the first time we go up in that. And he goes, so you, it's not, but he goes, we do, we're going we're gonna to make fun of you. I said, you can make fun of me all you want, man. I'm, but I'm really proud that I got, to, I got to pull nine and a half G's. You know, that was, um, I was like, I feel like a man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, so we'll definitely look for you next time uh, we're in Vegas. And the exchange wishes you all the best in all your future endeavors. endeavors. And thank you very much. And if you don't mind uh, staying on a little bit after the chat so we can say our formal goodbye goodbyes, but I just wanted to say thank you again. Appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been a delight. I can't wait to meet you in person. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Terry. All right. Now we'll check that Justin. out. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh.